Hi, I'm Randy Martins. I'm one of the product designers for Avid Media Composer. In this video, we'll discuss some recent changes we've made to the advanced keyframe editor. Specifically, the interpolation between keyframes is now set to spline, start and end keyframes, and the fact that sliders are now available full time, plus a couple of other little goodies. So if we take a look at my sequence, I have a very simple V2 clip over V1, and I'm going to apply a picture in picture. And we're going to open up our effect editor. And you'll notice that if I add a keyframe, the first thing is that we are now set to linear. In previous releases, it was set to spline. And this caused problems for people who are just trying to create simple animations. The ease in and out effect of spline was causing them to go in and turn it off, basically. So while we still have spline, people looking to build simple animations get a good starting point with just linear interpolation. We used to provide you with two keyframes for every parameter within that effect, right out of the gate. And it was very useful for people who wanted to do animations quickly. However, when we moved to AVX2, effects like Spectromat or third-party effects such as Boris or Sapphire would apply a keyframe to every parameter, or two keyframes to every parameter, and thus consuming a lot of memory. This caused problems in 32-bit systems. And now that we're 64-bit, while that's less of a concern, we still need to keep start and end keyframes somewhat tempered to preserve the 32-bit conform workflows. So what we'd like to do in the future is to be able to reinstate start and end keyframes to its full abilities, but for now we have a little bit of a compromise for you. In the new keyframe editor, what we're looking to do is save you a couple of clicks at least by providing a right-click menu of add, start, and end keyframes. You can do this at either the master track the group track, such as if I was to look at scaling, or at the individual parameter level right here. And if you want to clean up and be good about saving some memory, you can always go into the effect and select remove redundant keyframes, which will clean up any keyframes that aren't used. In earlier releases, sliders would appear and disappear based on A, keyframe availability, and B, whether they were selected or not. If a parameter had no keyframes, you got a slider. And if you added a keyframe and it was selected, you still had a slider. But if that keyframe was deselected, that slider would disappear. Now, sliders are available regardless. So you'll always have your sliders available to you. So if I select a keyframe, and I'm going to animate our X position parameter here. I'm going to add another keyframe. I'm going to change its value. And I'll do the same down here. We'll make a little something different. You'll notice, now that the Y parameter is enabled and the X is deselected, you'll notice as I scrub the blue bar through that we report the values on the X position. So if I move the blue bar here, you'll notice that the position is 119, even though no keyframes are selected. So as I scrub the blue bar through, we continue to see the parameters increase in this direction. In earlier releases, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 would actually increment or decrement a selected keyframe, while the numbers 5 through 0 would actually provide a numeric entry for that parameter. So what we've done is we've removed the mapping while you have a selected keyframe, and now you can enter 1 through 0. So on this particular case, if I select my keyframe, I can now enter the value 1, 2, 3, and hit Enter, and the keyframe adjusts. In previous releases, that would have either incremented or decremented the keyframe by a value of 1 or 10. Now, you can still do that, and you can still do that using the arrow keys, the left and right key, or the up and down key. So if I hit the left key, I'm decrementing. If I hit the right arrow key, I'm incrementing. If I hold down Shift, we're jumping by units of 10. So, while we've removed the mapping from 1, 2, 3, and 4, those keys are still there on the arrows for you. So we hope that these changes in the advanced keyframe editor help your workflows.